for this computer. Okay, so I'm back to recording, or I'm on the record now. Sorry about that. So um, how many of you guys just, just by, um, how many of you guys have asked, been asked to help kids get pictures or to um, access this type of thing online? Okay. So did many of you, now Google is just one resource. It's obviously a resource that a lot of the kids use, so that's why I bring it up. Um, but there are a lot of other tools and resources out there um, that provide educational reuse, um, appropriate pictures and, and resources and things like that. So two as, of my favorites are photosforclass.com. Um, so that one's a really um, nice one that you know that they have given you permission to use those pictures. Um, also, Unsplash is a really um, high resolution, great pictures. Um, and so those are two great places to look. So photosforclass.com and Unsplash. So we can put this in notes and we'll kind of add them as we go along. Yep, so we'll add those to the slides so you have those resources as well. And like Stephanie said, we if, if you're interested, we could do a whole bunch more on this during our summer training um, because this is definitely something that I know that I would ask my parent, parents to do a lot um, to help me with. So something that I figured was probably good information for you. Okay, so one thing, and you guys have probably seen this in the news a lot, there's there's these apps, they're kind of hidden apps that kids are starting to use um, that may look like an appropriate or an educational app, but the intent of the apps are very, um, we'll say just not appropriate. So there is in the slides, there's a ABC News report that recently took place. If you click on that link, it'll tell you about some of these apps. Um, and I can take you to just a few of those now, but what they do is there's one of them that's actually called a calculator app and it it's called the calculator. It looks like the calculate a calculator, but it actually is a photo vault where kids can take and hide pictures in this photo in this calculator app. But to you, it looks like they're actually doing um, schoolwork on a calculator. Um, so another one, and this one has been pretty popular Hard recently. Only on 13 oh, is live sorry, the video started. The um, Bay City Police. And this is a good video to watch because it'll walk you through some of these. But this Ask FM, this is an anonymous question and answer app, but it's been it's not it's never been used for an a good purpose. It's actually been used to, for bullying and for um, very inappropriate things. So that is not, in fact, we, we banned that app in our district when I worked at Boone Central because of, of the implications of it. So some of these things, like I said, some of them are hidden apps. Some of them are apps that the kids might have or have access to, especially at the high school and middle school levels. If you see some of these, um, you may want to bring that to a teacher's attention. Um, or even an administration attention. And again, if you would like more on that, we can talk more about that over the summer because there's, there's actually more than I'd like to even um, cover with you, but there's a lot of those apps out there. So do you guys have any more questions? That kind of, I just skim the, the basics of digital citizenship and, and those components. Do you guys have any questions that I can answer on that for you before we move on? Okay, great. So now we're going to jump into a few of the technology tools that you mentioned you wish you would see. And I'm gonna need your feedback on this because um, the survey results, like I said, were, um, there was a lot for a lot of them. So I wasn't sure what ones to cover and at what level because technology, there's so much involved in all these different tools. Um, but here's your survey in case you've never seen Google Forms. I can pull up um, the information that you filled out for me and get a quick overview of the top ones. Um, and one of the biggest ones was the interactive whiteboards. So 
just to kind of um, give you a little bit of vocabulary on this, a lot of times when, when people say interactive boards, they use the term smart board. And a smart board is actually a company. So a smart board, you may have a, an interactive board in your school, but it may not be a smart board. A smart board is a product. Same it's, as, it's a brand. Yep. It's like us saying band-aids uh, for all bandages and Coke for all kinds of pop. Um, so, but, yep. but it was one of the first ones around there. So I think we latched onto that name. Yep. Smart boards and Prometheans. Those were actually the first two interactive boards that came out and smart was more popular in this area because it was produced, um, in the United States. The, and they have this huge community of teachers that have created all these great, um, lessons and designs and shared with everybody. Now Promethean has done an excellent job of that um, to catch up with SmartBoard as well, but that's another interactive board. And then some of you might see an interactive board in your classroom that's just this arm on your whiteboard. That is called a Mimeo. And then there's another one that's called an Inyo. So those are all different kinds of smart boards. There's more information and videos on these linked to each one of these kinds. Um, but I wanted to point out on these interactive boards, a couple of the, um, I don't know what this is. A couple of the, that was weird. Um, sorry about that. Um, these boards actually function, like the cool aspect of these boards is they do a lot with layering. And so um, you can create these really fun games for students by just layering objects. And it, you can kind of think of it as one of those overhead transparencies. Um, so kids like to have the ones that are created where you can hide and show different things. And so I wanted to show you an example of what that looks like. And again, I'm working from another computer, so I have a lot of stuff open here. So ignore my, <laughs> ignore my desktop if you can. Um, but I created a, oh, it's not that one, a math lesson for a teacher. And it had a lot to do with, with layering. And now I'm not finding it here. So when I was in the classroom, I taught third grade and we did a lot with our math meeting board for Saxon math. Um, we would do that. Um, I created all the lessons right onto my Promethean board. So it was interactive. The kids liked it more. Um, it was a great way to use our board, I think. And the kids were up actually using the pen. Um, so there's some cool functions like, are you gonna do magic? Um, no, this one is, this one should be a math lesson that I created. So there's, I mean, there's some, some tools when she talks about layering that use like invisible ink and it's almost like a scratcher ticket, um, that they can scratch away that, um, that color on top to have the answer revealed or whatever. So there's some really fun things. And um, Tina mentions that she made this, but um, actually, like she said, in the smart uh, boards and then the Promethean Planet actually have games already made up for you. So when we were kind of talking about this, I thought um, when my, I had my board and it was new, especially, uh, we loved it at uh, inside recess time when mm -hmm. I'd have the kids in the room and they were all getting kind of crazy. It was a good time to just go out to one of those sources and pull a game in that was already made for me. And, and like Stephanie said, the magic of all of this, it's magic to the younger kids because it, it's just kind of hide and reveal sort of games that you can do. And I have to apologize. I didn't make this one, but I did get this one off of Promethean Planet. The one I was looking for wasn't on this desktop. So basically this one is from a math lesson and this a Saxon math lesson, which some of you might be familiar with. But as you can see, you can just pull these, this, it's a big square and all of that stuff underneath is just layered underneath the square and you pull it down to reveal. Um, and those of you who do Saxon math probably recognize, you know, this is uh, um, the opening Saxon math lessons, and you can just put them all right in here, and it's they're this is interactive. Probably a lower ele elementary, 
example, right? Um, mm -hmm. Like K or one. And the neat part about this is these are all objects, so you can very easily duplicate them just by clicking and then selecting duplicate, and you can change them um, however you wish just by clicking. And so the, the manipulatives, how I always use this stuff is I would actually have manipulatives for the kids. And if I was up at the board, I would use the exact same manipulative on the board um, so that I could model for the kids and they could all see, but the kids could be modeling the same thing at their desk. And it was very easy to recreate some of these. And like Stephanie said, if you guys are helping kids with lessons and you have access, you don't even have to have the board itself. If you have access to this software, I created all of my lessons on software on the computer. I did not use the board to create the lessons. In fact, it was a pain to use the board to create the lessons. Mm -hmm. So if you have one of these um, interactive boards in your district and you want to know more about how you can use these to help support your kids, let me know. I taught with one of these type of boards for um, six years and I've used them since then. So um, there's a lot of resources in here, like I said, manipulatives, there's games, there's all kinds of stuff that your kids can utilize. So now so, uh, I'll just, while we're on this too, one note on copyright, that when Saxon Math um, produces all those problems of the day and everything, those are copywritten problems. And so I, when I left the classroom, one of my friends said, you need to sell all your lessons on Teachers Pay Teachers, go sell them. I make some money off of them and I absolutely couldn't because those were copy written all the math the the problems that they had the order that they had the word problems that they had that was all copy written so well and the and another good thing about that is when like Stephanie mentioned before you can go to those um, sites and get the ones that teachers already created but when you download those they become um, your your tool and your resource at your disposal so you can change them and modify them to fit your needs however you want. So that's another good reason to use those already created ones because then you have a template. So I want to ask, before we move on, I want to ask of you guys, what sort of things or what questions do you have on interactive boards or what kind of things would you like to see with the interactive boards? Even if we don't cover it today, it might be something we can look at um, this summer. Please, please, um, please speak up and let us know what you need here. Is it, is it more technical on just how to use it? What are the tools? Or is it more on how do I create something? I think the teachers probably would create the what you want to use, but I would be more interested on just how to use it. How to use the software? Right. How to, how to like pull the things off their computer and put it onto the board and. Sure. Great. Like okay. Anybody else? Thank you, Deb. Okay, so how many of you, I'm just curious, um, do you know what brands of interactive boards you guys have in your districts? Ben, do you have any interactive boards in your district? We've got three in our school. Okay, three different kinds? No, I think I believe they're all smart boards. All smart okay. boards, okay. They're, I think that's what they are. I think okay. it says smart board on the boards. Wonderful. And I'm assuming you have those at the elementary level, correct? Yeah, they're all in the elementary. Yeah, okay. Lynch, do you guys have, what do you have, or do you have interactive boards? Oh, hold on. I'm going to unmute, unmute you. Hold on just a second. Okay, there you go. I think they're smart boards. Okay. okay. In elementary? Yeah, in elementary. There's some in elementary. There's high school too. High school. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, at the middle school, do you guys have any interactive boards at that level? We have smart boards in every room, I think. In every room. I think do, your, do your teachers use them a lot? Yes, yes, they use them a lot. Yeah. Are you asked to use them very often? No. How about if there's a sub? Are you asked to come help step in and get things going? 
we usually ask a student, they know more than we do. <laughs> <laughs> I always trained like three kids in my class, like you are my tech guru when I'm gone, do this for the sub. <laughs> yep, I did the same. Yeah. You know, um, and, and this is just a side note, I started on the smart board, in the smart board software, and I know Promethean has it, and I believe Mimeo has it, I'm not sure on how it works yet, but as a teacher, you could actually record your entire lesson mm -hmm from the board itself and then replay it when, so I use that a lot when I was gone because I could replay the entire lesson for my students and they were getting it from me. And then the other part about that was is if a student was gone, I could actually have them watch the lesson while the rest of the class kind of moved on and then I could touch base with them later. So that's a really cool feature that I think is highly underutilized um, because you're already up there teaching the lesson as a teacher or as a para, why not record it so kids can have it to, to refer back to later? So just, mm -hmm. just a side note for you. Thank you, middle school. All right, Deb, how about you? What, what, do you have boards in your district? What sort do you have? What level? I believe they're smart boards. Okay. Thanks. And they're throughout the school. Wow. Okay, so you say throughout the school at all levels? Yeah. Wonderful. Interesting. Yep. Okay. Um, and Cindy, Cindy's group, do you have, what do you have in your district? Yeah. We're just, we only know about the elementary and we're guessing we've seen one smart board in one classroom. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, so you use the overhead projector more than anything else. Really? Yeah. Okay. Maybe they need some training. <laughs> well, I'd be more than happy to come out and do that for them. So make sure you mention that. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Ona. Uh, Did we get you already? Okay, we have. I guess they tell me we have smart boards. Okay. But we're supposed to be getting the. They're looking into getting the Promethean. Prometheans. The Promethean okay. instead. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, very good. So for those of you who were interested in that, um, would you like me to cover anything else on that topic or would you like to just move forward? Silence will tell me just to move forward. But I think that in the future, maybe this summer, as we have some time for technology, we look at the actual tool, tools and how to open up um, a, a flip chart, that's Promethean's um, name for them, open a flip chart, um, be able to write on it, use the different tools, change the pages, some of the basics of it maybe there. Yeah, yeah. And that way, way if you guys are asked, even just to use the tools themselves, um, knowing how to use them on the computer is um, gets you miles ahead. So mm -hmm. we will definitely look into that. Okay, so another part of the survey was some, some Google components, and, and one of them was um, the Google Calendar. And so what I thought I'd do for this is just to show you some basics of the Google Calendar. A lot of our districts actually use Google because Google for Education is free. They give you free all these tools for free, and they give you unlimited storage for free if you have an education account. So that's why Google has pretty much immersed itself into the education platform and they provide some pretty awesome resources. So first of all, before I jump into my calendar, I wanna warn you, it, it, there's I have a lot of stuff on there and so I hope your guys' don't look anything like that. ESU calendars are crazy, <laughs> crazy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you into mine, but don't make it, don't let me make you panic here. So um, number one, you can look at uh, different views of this. Um, yeah, I'm going to turn off a few. So I have all these different calendars in here. Um, if you look at over here on the left hand side, um, I have tons of calendars and I'm just going to shut some of them off. So we as colleagues can share calendars, but what's cool about that is if your school's using it and you have a calendar for each teacher, maybe you'd know the days that they were gone, the days that they were going to be there when tests were coming up, things like that if they use that calendar. Yes, and, and they can create like a sports calendar or any, any calendar they want, and then you could have 
um, access to that calendar whenever. But I just want to show you a few simple things and a few tips and tricks here in a Google Calendar. So number one, if you, just a keystroke for you, if you want to look at an entire month on your keyboard, if you're in Google Calendar and you type the M, it will change it to month view. If you type a W, it's going to change it to a week view. And if you hit a D, it's going to change you just to that day. So that's just a quick tip. I am oftentimes um, flipping between those views. And you can also do that up here. But it's just easier on a keystroke to type that month is M, week is W, and D is day. It makes per perfect sense, right? So um, now, if you want to add a, an event, you can do it a couple different ways. But I find the easiest is to jump in that spot in the calendar and just click. And then it gives me this little screen. So this little screen here is just really a quick access screen. So you can type in the type of an event here. Um, and then you can set the <laughs> can't type and talk at the same time. Um, but you can set the name and you can set the time for the event and you can always click on that to change. You can also click in here and just set a specific time. Um, but if you come down here where it says more options under that, I 90% of the time where I, well actually probably 98% of the time I create an event, I always go into the more options because within here you can set the the name the date the time you can set it to you could say it's all day you could say oh this is like for birthdays um i set the birthdays to repeat annually so every year so that i don't have to add it to my calendar each year i have um, certain meetings that meet at a certain time every month those repeat for me yes and your school probably has some repeating events for you if they use Google Calendar. You can set notifications to come to you. I really like this because if I get an email and I have to remember to do something specific, I copy the email right in here so I know exactly what it is I have to look at. And then over here, if this is a meeting that I need Stephanie to join me on, I can start typing in her email. And then when I save this event, it's going to send this to my calendar as well as Stephanie's calendar, and it's gonna ask her to accept it or so decline I'll get it. it. I'll get an email saying Tina's invited me to a, an appointment or whatever. So, and that happens automatically when you save. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna discard that so it doesn't show up in my calendar. You might have also noticed that there's a lot of colors. It's colorful. So it assigns everybody a different, or every calendar a different color. Even my own calendars that are, um, I have several different calendars on my own, um, and they're in, each in a different color. So Tina must be blue. On my computer, Tina's yellow, um, and everybody's will be a little bit different like that. And you can customize the colors. So maybe even for your use at home, you want to use Google Calendar for each member of your family and keep track of your kids and where they're going all the time. Each person could have a different color. And the other part about this is if you use Google, it actually syncs very nicely with your phone. Um, so you can get that information on your phone or set up events on your phone as well. So you always have that option in any, pretty much any mobile device. Um, I wanted to show you real quick because we got a lot more that we can cover. But if you want to add a coworker's calendar, you can start typing in their email address here. And then you could select that coworker and it will add their calendar to your to your um, calendar list that you can turn on and turn off. Um, so if I want to go back in here and now it's kind of acting funny, um, but if I want to turn back on, we'll turn this calendar on. If I click on that, I don't have any events this week for that, but it'll turn those notifications or those um, that color for that calendar back on to my list. So. That is kind of just a really basic, there's actually a lot more in Google Calendar that I could show you, but I didn't want to take too much time on one. Do you guys have any questions or anything I can help you with on Google Calendar? Or, you know, a time that you got hung up with it, something that exactly you need help with? Okay. okay. All right, so I'm gonna move down to Google Drive. 
So again, because of the Google for Education platform, a lot of your districts probably have started using Google Drive. And if you don't use Google Drive, um, the Office 365 also has some of these similar components. So um, you may be using something, um, basically it's called a cloud sharing um, document where your district might be sharing things to you um, to a it's portal like a kind of like box. this. I think it's like a file cabinet. Um, and it's, but the cool thing about it is that people can share things with you electronically. You can send things out and share them. Or you can just store your your um, things there. Tina and I have a shared folder in ours that's all about paras. And so we share all of our presentations that we're making, all of our handouts and flyers and things like that are all located in one folder. So, and really, it's it. this is taking the place of what you always probably used to put on your computer or on your desktop on your computer. This is cloud-based, and what that means is that basically you can collaborate, like Stephanie mentioned, but if I, like I told you earlier, I'm on a different device. And so if I use my username and password to get in on this second device, I have complete access to all this stuff as long as I have an internet connection. So um, a good, good story about this is um, I was on vacation on a cruise, one time when I was applying for a job and I needed to send my resume right away um, to a, a district. And so I went to a little internet cafe in the middle of this island, was able to access my resume because it was digital in my Google Drive and sent it um, within three minutes of them asking. So or, or today, that's cloud-based. Yeah, and today Tina was having trouble with one computer, so she got on another computer and everything, everything follows you. So you're never without it. So a lot of the questions that I get on Google Drive is somebody has shared something with me, said you got it in an email, and then you can't find it again. So in Google, if somebody has shared something with you that is not your document, it is actually, um, you have what's called your drive, which is over here, um, but you also have this little button down here on the left-hand side that says shared with me. In the shared with me, this is where all of the documents go that somebody else might have shared with you. So if you're having trouble finding something in that you're looking for, if you come down to shared with me, you can, it's more than likely probably in here. Now, Google Drive, the Google, whole Google platform is based on Google search. That's how Google started. Um, they wanted to make a good solid search engine. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a Google nerd. I read the Google book. And so I know this, I know the history here. Um, so basically they started their whole platform on Google search. So within drive, because I have so much stuff in here, like these are folders within folders within folders. To me, if I go in and search a folder, it might be within five other folders. That's not, that's time consuming. So if I want to find something, if I come up here to the search and start typing in either the title of the document, um, I can come down here and do a, um, an advanced search and I can search for the type of document. I can search by owner. So if I know Stephanie shared something with me and I want to say, okay, I want to search stuff from her. If I put in her email address, it will search, for stuff that she shared directly with me. Um, I can search by date, I can search by title, I can search by any of that stuff. So as you guys start getting more stuff or your district starts sharing stuff in these cloud devices, especially within Google, search is probably going to be your best option. But like I said, I always like to highlight with people that this shared with me is also over here because if your administration is using Google, they're 99% of the time they're gonna share it via shared with me and it will be stuck in this folder. So if it's stuck in this folder and you wanna file it, um, I'll just choose this one right here. If you wanna put it into say, like you put stuff on your computer desktop, um, if I wanna do that, I have to go under shared with me and then open up the document and as soon as it completely loads over here, it's gonna give me the option to add it to my drive. Um, and of course, it's really slow because I opened a big one. Sorry about that. 
as soon as my icon pops up over here, see if it's loading. Gosh, it's really slow today. One cool thing also about all these Google items are that they automatically save for you. So I know back in the old days, you know, our computers would die on us or something in the middle of working on something. And but with Google, it always is saved, especially with kids. I think that that's an awesome feature because we know how they are about saving things and they might forget. And I, I remember losing a paper once because I didn't save. It was heartbreaking. Um, okay, so that one's not going to load. I think there's too many images in there. We'll try We'll try this one. This one's just should be a one page document. Um, so something really quick for you to note. Do you see how this button says view only? That means I have no access to edit this document. So when you share with somebody, you are, are giving certain credentials on whether you can sh um, edit the document, whether you can make a copy, or whether you can just look at it. And this one, I can't click in to modify at all. But notice this little icon that came up here. This is the option to add to my Google Drive. And when I click on that, it gives me then the opportunity to go and put this into a folder that I have created in my drive. So it's no longer going to be in shared with me. It'll be in my drive in that advisor folder. So, um, and that, that is just a very basic, oh, I did wanna show you one more thing and we're almost out of time. So I wanna show you this real quick before we get out of drive. But if I go to new up here, there are more options than just creating a new document. You have, you could create a folder. You could go to your computer and upload a document that you've saved on there. You could actually go out to your computer and upload an entire folder that's on your computer into Google Drive. You can add a document, sheet, Google Slides, and then under more, you have a lot more options. Um, so anytime you want to add something in Google Drive, if you go to that blue new button, and that's pretty standard in anything Google. So it's all free software free, you know, things that we used to have to pay a lot of money to put on our computers is now um, internet-based and free, web-based and free. So awesome. Okay, so um, <laughs> we actually have four minutes left of our presentation. And some of the other topics that you were asking to cover was a little bit with Gmail and then some assistive technology things. So I wanted to highlight to you that in, in this uh, presentation, which will be up on the Paras of ESU8 website, there will be some more um, details in there for you on those different topics. This one's kind of a fun one. When you're creating Gmail um, emails, it will help you with keyboard sh shortcuts that I use all the time. It's a huge time saver. Um, so make sure you check those out. And then and we might be asking you for some more details on each of these categories for the summer because we spent um, might try to spend some time on technology. So. Yeah, so be looking for that because we need to get more feedback on what you guys want. And it's hard to cover some of these tech resources and tools with you in the short amount of time that we have for these Zoom sessions. So if you would like to see more and you want to send an email to me right away, that's great. If you want to see more on any one of these topics or something that we miss, um, you're welcome to email me right away. We're already kind of making a list of ideas for the summer. Um, or you could wait um, until we send out a form to inquire later. Um, but you're welcome to send me an email now so we can um, start adding to our plans already. So do you guys have any questions or anything that I could cover for you before we hang up for the day? Anything that would help you in the next month make it through the last part of the school year? Okay. Silence. <laughs> well, we, um, you know, we know that these topics are broad. So, um, you know, as we send out a survey, which we will send out a survey about what you need this summer, um, we hope that you fill it out and let us know because really these trainings are all about you and your needs. And so we want it really to be um, things that you need to learn to make your job easier. Um, and so we've been talking about next year. And mm -hmm. next summer uh, we have our date scheduled so please save the date August 10th 2018 we'll be back here in Neely at this time at our fairgrounds building which is large enough to host um, us all um, 
and we'll be covering lots of different topics that day. Um, we know that we want to have some time spent for different age levels, um, preschool, upper elementary, secondary. Um, we know we have some tech topics that we think we should cover, but we'll be surveying you and your principals um, about some other topics that will be pertinent at your school buildings. So as you wrap up your school year, this might be a good time to kind of process your whole year and what, what you could have utilized throughout the year or things, ideas that you might um, have for us to cover over the summer that would be helpful for you as you go through your next school year. Um, so be keeping those in mind. And again, if you wish to share those through an email or contact us another way to let us know that that would be great. We will be sending out a survey, but it's always good to have um, whatever details you have, especially if you're thinking about it right now. Yeah, or and share now and or email too with us a lot at any time you want something, email with us. So, All right. Any other questions, comments, concerns, ideas? Anything you want to share? Okay, everybody, reach your hand up in the air. Reach your hand up in the air and pat yourself on the back. You made it through a school year. You made it through all of these para webinars. And uh, we're so proud of each and every one of you and the dedication that you have to kids. Um, my very first principal said, I want you to teach the kids a lot. I, you know, you need to get through curriculum, but if I have to tell you one thing, go love your students. And I know that each of you do that every single day. So thanks for showing up and making a difference in kids' lives. And make sure you reflect today on all the kids that you have helped this year because you've helped a lot and that's, that's important. So thank you for all that you do. Thanks Bye, ladies. Guys. Happy summer in a couple weeks. Thank <laughs> you.